Driving at 200 miles per hour and fighting for millions in prize money sounds pretty stressful. No thinking, no Throw rain on top of that, things get even more stressful. Like your mom when I don't do my monthly visit to give her a a minor mistake like braking too late might cost you a decent lap time in the dry, but can produce a race ending wreck in the wet. So why do some Formula One drivers say that rain is more fun, a rush, and that it even creates better racing? Well today on B2B we're going to look at why rain changes the game in F1 and how it can level the playing field, making worse cars better. Huh, looks like Nikita Mazepan might have a chance after all. Doubt it! Let's go! This episode is sponsored by Gran Turismo 7, now available on PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5. I think this means we made it. Hey Jerry, you see this comment? Yo, who's the best driver at Donut? Huh, well obviously it's me. me. It's me, Nolan. It's me. Obviously it's me, Nolan. Wait, you think you're better than me? Oh, I know I am. Well, why don't you prove it, Jerry? Oh, you name the time and the place, Nolan. Nolan, Nolan, Nolan. Gran Turismo 7, PS5, right now. Player one. Jeremiah Burton, 22 years old. If reckon Nolan's wrong, well, I don't want to be right. Player two. Nolan Sykes, not 22, and I'm about to bring the heat. Going down, Jerry. Stop ramming me, dude. Gran Turismo has always been the real driving simulator, and GT7 is the best one yet. Buy, tune, race your way through the solo campaign, or if you love going head to head with friends, you can compete in the GT Sport mode like us. And thanks to the power of the PS5, you get the most realistic 420 cars and over 90 tracks with dynamic weather conditions and stunning 4K and HDR and 60 FPS. Whether you're playing on a sim setup like us or Feeling all the subtle bumps on the road on your DualSense wireless controller, Gran Turismo 7 helps you feel your position on the road like no other racing game. No, 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 no! No! Yes! <sighs> Told you, Jerry, I'm the best. Yeah, yeah. Rematch tomorrow? I'll be here. All right, I'm gonna get out of here. Later, Nolan. It's the coolest thing I've ever seen. At a rainy Belgian GP in 2021, George Russell shocked everyone by qualifying second. We expect more of that this year because he'll be driving a Mercedes, but his old Williams car was usually close to the rear of the pack. Other drivers though, they weren't so surprised. They know a worse F1 car can suddenly seem better when things get wet, and there are a couple of reasons why tires, changing track conditions, and wet and dirty air. But the whole explanation starts at the very core of how F1 cars are designed. Formula One engineers know that winning means squeezing every last ounce of speed from the formula. That's the rules which govern F1 car design. If they can figure out how to go around a corner at just 0.1 miles per hour faster than their competition, that could mean a championship. But all their hard work gets washed away when it gets a little drippy outside. That's because the cars are engineered to achieve their maximum performance at the limits of grip. And water happens to drastically reduce that. The amount of grip between two surfaces can be expressed numerically as their coefficient of friction. The lower the value is, the less coefficient of friction you have, the more slippery it is. The higher it is, the more grip you have the more friction you have between two surfaces. So for example, rubber tires and asphalt have a high frictional coefficient. It's usually 0.9 or higher in dry conditions. But for a slick tire on wet asphalt, that value can be as low as 0.1. 1,000 horsepower and the best aerodynamic tricks in the world are simply no use when everyone's struggling just to get their tires to hook up. So rain removes much of the engineering advantage that the top cars have, evening the field and putting the pressure on the drivers. 
That's not always obvious though, because teams like Mercedes and Red Bull often have the best cars and the best drivers. But you can see the impact on Rain and Russell's performance in Belgium, or Ocon's win with Alpine in Hungary. Rain shifts the pressure to the driver because winning in the wet depends on factors the car's designers simply don't have control over, like the tires. Every F1 team receives identical tires from Pirelli. We've made a couple of episodes about those, but we haven't talked about rain tires very much. Now those come in two flavors. You got wet and intermediate. Inners have shallow tread grooves, which run from the center to either edge of the tread. Full wet tires have deeper grooves that crisscross, dividing that tread into individual blocks. We made an entire episode about why tire tread looks the way it does, and a big reason is to prevent hydroplaning. Smooth tires like racing slicks can only push a small amount of water out of the way. Standing water, which exceeds that limit, leads to hydroplaning, also called aquaplaning. That is when a layer of water gets between the tire and the road, preventing them from making contact and effectively dropping your grip to zero. If that happens, bye-bye acceleration, braking and steering. Just let the car just go on a slippery journey into the wall. Now grooves in a tire's tread act as passages to channel water out of the way, letting that rubber make contact with the road and produce grip. The little groove is like, hey water, get out of here. I want my rubber to touch the asphalt. The grooves on an intermediate F1 tire can evacuate up to 30 liters of water per second when you're going 300 kilometers per hour. It's 186 miles per. 30 liters? Dude, that's a ton. That's like, imagine taking a full pee just in one second. That'd be awesome. It'd save me so much time. This is how much time you spend in your life going to the bathroom. That's what B2B brings you. Just facts about your body. Those grooves are relatively shallow because enters are designed for use on tracks that are just a little bit wet or in the process of drying. Once those grooves are worn down, an intermediate tire is pretty much just an ordinary slick. They're a different compound and won't be quite as good as regular tires, but a car can use them on a dry track. F1's wet tires, however, are different. The tread grooves are much, much deeper so they can evacuate up to 85 liters of water per second. <laughs> Holy crap, but they don't work on a dry track. That's because their tread blocks serve another purpose, and that is creating heat. Water is a very effective coolant, and that makes it hard to get tires up to temperature on a wet track. So the tread blocks on F1 wet tires move around on the road surface. They squirm, generating extra friction that raises their temperature. That also means on a dry track, wet tires overheat. You'll sometimes see F1 drivers puddle hunting on a drying track, driving through standing water to cool their tires. Now the other problem with the wet tires is that groove tread is a compromise. Coefficient of friction depends not only on the materials and their temperature, but also on their texture. A typical pattern tire in the wet can have a coefficient of friction as high as 0.4, but much better than a slick's 0.1. But a pattern tire only has a dry coefficient of friction at about 0.7, less than the slick's 0.4. But there's still one more benefit to having tread blocks on a wet tire. They make it taller. Now in 2021, a wet F1 tire had a diameter of 680 millimeters, 20 millimeters more than a dry tire. That extra height is useful because it's not just the tires that hydroplane, the entire car can. The lowest point of an F1's car floor can be as little as 30 millimeters above the track, low enough to skip across a deep puddle. Now wet tires provide a little extra clearance. Now we don't know for sure if the 2022 wet tires will have a larger diameter, but it is likely that they will. The most recent regulations say dry tire diameter can't exceed 725 millimeters and wet can't exceed 735. And we don't have final sizes yet on wet tires, but if they say the max is gonna be 735, you can believe they're gonna make them 735. The final preseason test of 2022 wet tires is happening in Barcelona the day after we shot this episode. Now the designers of F1 cars are at the mercy of Pirelli and the FIA when it comes to the tires, but race engineers and drivers have some control over how they manage those tires for wet conditions. It's their job to identify the constant changes during a wet race and plan tire choices accordingly. Get that wrong and you can end up like Lando at the Russian GP. In the lead with just four laps to go, he failed to pit on wet tires and when rain began, he ended up finishing in seventh. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha!
Now it's hard to blame him though, because the track conditions change unpredictably when rain begins. And that's one reason why racers have to learn to identify the wet line. Under ordinary conditions, the fastest way around a track is the racing line that follows an out in out pattern. The car starts each corner at the outside edge of the track, turns towards the apex at the inside, then moves back towards the outside for the corner exit. That line minimizes the angle of each corner, maximizing grip and speed. But all of that changes when the track gets moist. Since the racing line sees the most traffic, it has a buildup of rubber deposits from the car's tires. If conditions stay dry, that rubbered in asphalt, it provides the best traction. Rubber grips rubber better than it grips plain asphalt. But that layer of rubber is much smoother than plain asphalt. And when it gets wet, it has much less traction. Bare asphalt has more grip because of its rough surface. And because of that, the fastest line in the wet is usually off of the dry line. The wet line is closer to the center of the track and a good driver only crosses the dry line with their wheels as straight as possible using minimal throttle to avoid a spin. So figuring out when to move on and off of the dry line is one thing that separates exceptional wet drivers from the rest. In a race, the ideal wet line changes frequently as passing cars move water around, making temporary dry lines. Now new hazards can appear like deep puddles as water collects in areas like apexes. The amount of grip and exactly where it can be found is constantly changing, corner to corner, lap to lap. It's like a dirt bike track, man. That's why dirt bikes are sick as hell. The track is constantly changing. You're not only battling your, your opponents, you're battling the track. Wet grip is simply hard to predict, and if you get it wrong, you could become a passenger. Minor errors in the dry become race ending events in the wet. Lose a little grip on a dry track and you'll probably gain it in a moment later, but if you do it in the wet, once the grip is gone, it often stays gone. That's not just bad for you, it can be bad for everyone around you. Take the opening lap in Hungary last year, for example, where Lewis's teammate Botas hit the brakes too late and took out five other cars. Events like that are why every driver knows that a wet track requires leaving some extra space between you and your opponent. But another reason to leave extra space is spray. <laughs> the cloud of water erupting from each car makes wet races exciting to watch, but especially challenging for drivers. It's actually worse than it seems on TV. The cockpit cameras on F1 cars are mounted several inches above the driver's head, so their view is worse. Sergio Perez said the visibility can get so bad it doesn't even matter if you keep your eyes open or closed. <laughs> well, probably, I don't know if that's so true probably better to keep them open. Now, some of that spray is produced by the tires. That 85 liters of water being evacuated from each tire turns into a fine airborne mist. When that mist is swirled by the turbulent air created by the car's aerodynamics, it turns into a spray, obscuring the view from anyone who's not in the lead. That's why it's important to qualify and be freaking first on the grid, because you don't gotta worry about that. But much of the spray isn't produced by the tires, in fact. It's actually sucked up from the road by the car itself. F1 cars are designed to create negative pressure underneath their body. This creates a vacuum underneath the car, lifting water off the road surface. A part of how they create that negative pressure is with a diffuser at the rear. That accelerates the air passing underneath the car and sends it out to the back. In other words, F1 cars, they vacuum water off the road and eject it as a giant cloud at any car following them. Wet tires and the wet line won't be much different for 2022, but the aerodynamics that produce spray are changing. A lot of spray is the result of the same process that creates dirty air. And a big motivation for the aerodynamic changes coming for 2022 is cleaning up that dirty air. So will those changes help reduce spray? Well, F1 technical director Pat Simmons thinks so. Unfortunately, so far, it looks like he's completely wrong though about that. Mm, interesting, Mr. Simmons. Have you been wrong about something else in the past? Now in early testing, Alex Albon and Nicholas Latifi from Williams said that the 2022 cars create even more spray than before. The reason has to do with how the new cars tackle the dirty air problem. They've reduced the aerodynamic effect on surface parts and put more emphasis on negative pressure underneath the car. In other words, they've increased the power of the vacuum sucking water off the track. Of course, all of that air shooting out the rear diffuser creates a ton of dirty air. And the 2022 solution is to employ a beam wing. This smaller rear wing is mounted just above the diffuser where the air exits the underside of the floor. Its purpose is to project that turbulent air upwards above any cars which happen to be following it. While that does clean up the dirty air, it might actually make the spray problem worse, creating a bigger, taller 
smaller cloud of mist than the current cars. If you've listened to some F1 drivers talk, they describe wet racing as unforgiving, unpredictable, and requiring them to be much more alert and on the edge, kind of like everyone when they drive in the rain. But drivers also say it can be a lot of fun with more sliding and sideways drifting. It's definitely more exciting to watch and it creates some great racing by putting drivers to the test and giving opportunities to the ones who may not have the best car. This 2022 season is going to be so sick. I'm super excited. If you guys uh, wanna see more F1 content as the season comes about, leave a comment down below. We'd love making it. Maybe we should do some sort of podcast about F1. Maybe someone's already doing that by the name of Nolan. Maybe he'll have me on as a guest, maybe. Maybe we should do more F1 shows, maybe. Maybe I should race F1, maybe. That would be sick. Jeremiah, quit being a tool. Go get yourself our new tool shirt at donutmedia.com. That's right, we came out with our all new tools shirt. It's made out of 100% cotton, so it's the perfect shirt to wear while you work on your car. Or to give to that one friend who forgets the name of that one tool. Maybe it'll help you get that project car up and running that you've been planning on working on. Yeah, the problem is that I can't remember what pliers are called. <laughs> <laughs> this is probably, possibly, my favorite shirt we've ever made. First off, I love the color purple, and it looks sick against this gray. And it's like a cheat sheet. If you're in like automotive school, have the person that sits in front of you wear this shirt, and you'll get everything right on the test. Donutmedia.com, get you one today. Trust me, best shirt ever. Mm -hmm. So soft. Again, thanks so much for watching. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Follow us on Instagram at Donut Media. Follow me at Jeremiah Burton. Also, I want to give a special shout out to Jacob, AKA Drift Kid. Uh, he was on the Donut live stream and he won a shout out on B2B where I have to say hecky hecky na na. And that was something that I didn't say ever. I believe it was Job. But to a lot of you guys, we're the same person. You will now live on YouTube forever, Jacob. So enjoy that. If you want more cool perks like that, hit that join button down below. Donut Underground. You get, f you get to chat with us on the Discord. You get stickers. You get to win cool stuff from time to time, like things that you've seen on D-List and uh, obviously shout outs. Thank you guys so much for watching. Till next week. Bye for now. Do kids still have tree houses? That's still a thing? I hope so too. If you guys have never been in a tree house, I hope you get in one. That's what that's what kids are supposed to be doing, you know? Tree house, looking at nudie max, playing PS2, you know? Man, that was a great time in my life. <laughs> Two years ago. <laughs>